peeps, it's your pal Teal. Today is day 38. Ooh, and it is a much more great day. I'm out repping this brand real quick. I'm gonna take it off because we are safely away from people. This is the greatest face mask I have ever owned. My beautiful mermaid sister gave it to me and it's a company called Golden Hour West. So look them up. She didn't ask me to rep her brand, nor am I famous yet, but you know. You do the work out there. Spread the poetry, people. Um, so I promised you this day, it's my Pa's birthday. Happy birthday, Pa. Now I wish I'd brought my corn cob pipe. Uh, this is the very first time I have a cinematographer, a filmer, a cameraman. It's my loving, sweet boo thing, my boyfriend. Um, he is filming for me today because I wanted a new location. My dad is such a lover of nature that I wanted to come here to the Poudre River and Gizmo's with me, of course. He always wants to be in the show. He's a total, total camera hog. I wonder where he gets it from. Um, brought a little bit of show and tell for you today and a little bit of backstory. But mostly I just wanted to do something short and sweet and simple for my pa. I wrote him a, a I started doing poetry when I was like, uh, I don't know, four. I don't mean to brag, but when I was about three or four before I learned actual human language. I made up my own alphabet. It's very alien looking. It looks like matrix symbols. Oh, somebody's oons in the parking lot. Hopefully get, that gets in background music because that's what nature needs. More oons. Um, so yeah, I, um, my, I, I made my dad this poem probably when I was about seven or eight and I drew these really huge cartoon uh, images of he and I together with the planets and moon and stars behind us. And I wrote, you are the best paw in the universe, but I spelt it Y-O-O-N-I-E-V-U-R-S-S-E, -S -S -E. universe. So oh, hello, tree friend. Uh, I don't know if you can zoom, go a little bit that way, babe, but where we are looks kind of like a beaver dam, which I'm really feeling how beaver dammy <laughs> my surroundings are because I'm gonna show you, first show and tell is my dad's uh, Native American um, astrology spirit animal is an otter, but mine is the beaver. So they're kind of homies. I feel like the otter and beaver are pals. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely have those beaver characteristics. My dad and I have stumbled upon, I think probably three or four beaver dams in our wanderings together but I love the artwork and he's butterfly clan, which means he has a sensitive soul, which is so true. But yeah, the otters, they're very resourceful. They sometimes hang out in rivers, just like this one here, kiddos and campers. Um, but yeah, very resourceful. They learn the wisdom. They're just inherently born with this ability to crack the, crack the mollusks and shells on their chests to get their sustenance crafty little fellows just like the beaver crafty um oh and what i'm wearing oh so the coat my dad just gave me gosh i think it was this christmas maybe this past birthday yeah birthday <laughs> my boyfriend remembers better than me but this is a, an incredible fur blonde uh beaver collar jacket very vintage very awesome makes me feel like Penny Lane makes me feel more comfy and laid back in my brain. It makes me feel cool. And then the shirt I'm wearing is a very awesome muscle shirt. You can't have to see. It's actually nice out here, man. It's pretty nice. Um, but this was a shirt that my dad was wearing when I was born in Poudre Valley Hospital. Here I am at the Poudre. See how it's all infinite and it all weaves together? But I did kind of a like femme, feminine knot on it. But it's like a cool, my dad had an awesome mullet in the 80s, like, mullet, and it was great. And yeah, so he was wearing this badass, at the time, very hot pink. It has since faded, but very pink shirt for such a manly forest man who can cut firewood and stuff. But I love that. I love erasing all of the expectations. We don't need that. Oh, I thought of the thing I was going to mention in my video that I forgot when I was down in my dark, creepy, emotional basement. 
I was going to mention something I know my dad would be proud of because he taught me how to curse and when and how and why. And uh, it was an article I found in a very like, ho, 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 like we are very intelligent sort of uh, article about how people who cuss, who curse, who swear are actually of higher intelligence and creativity. And you know what? I agree. My mom taught me a thing I also believe in because both things can be true in my like pursuit of being a famous actoid since I was a kid. She told me, you know, when you're in interviews on TV and stuff too, like you can't just be cursing all the time because I started, I put my little sailor pants on when I was about five, I'm not gonna lie, got in some trouble at school. But, uh, <laughs> um, but my dad always told me like, sometimes the best placed expression is a good swear word, just a good fuck right when you need one, you know? But my mom told me, if you use it too much, if you kind of abuse it and start to replace your love of other vocabulary, people aren't gonna take you as seriously or think that you are refined or soft of soul. And I think both things are true. So uh, I, I used many well-placed fucks last night and, I, and fuckings. And I think my dad, I think my pa would be real proud. Um, <laughs> so that's the thing I meant to bring up is they did this whole study. You know, they're always doing some sort of study we don't know about, but it said, yeah. Cursors, we smart. Um, but this was the other show and tell. My dad gave me this. Um, it's an elk's tooth. Uh, one of my favorite, most sacred pieces of jewelry. And he got it at a powwow, I believe. Um, and I wear it with this little encased rosebud that my mother gave me. It's a real rosebud in acrylic. So, special things. Everything in my life is a, is a shrine of some kind. And then these here pants, they come to you straight from the 1960s. Don't worry about it. Pretty slick. Uh, a few other little, little, little doodles here, and then we'll get the show on the road. Um, my pa gave me this for Christmas. I hope he works right now. Let's see if I can remember how to get him to work. Is it this way? Yeah. Oh, come on, Ferdinand. Sometimes you can get them really going, but, oh, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Oh yeah, oh, now he's going, now he's going, now he's on it, now he's on it, oh, he's revving. He's going right towards the matador, but his name is Ferdinand. You can see it on his little butt there. And then he has this adorable, darling little bee friend on his butt. And this guy is from 1938. What do you think of that slapping Jehoshaphat? That's crazy, 1938. So I am in Chinese astrology and in American, uh, 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 right? Astrological, your astrological sign. I'm a bull in both. Taurus, Buleta. My dad always calls me Buleta. Um, so anyway, I just love him with his tiny little bee and he's even got this ancient little piece of cloth in his mouth goodness knows what that did but this was my christmas present and my dad and i are always giving each other antiques it's like our special thing um and he's really good at it man he's good at antique shopping uh but this is this is the photo i promised you the other day when i did the poem for my dad who's recovering from his eye surgery and i did a poem about his visions he looked just like Ralphie in A Christmas Story. No joke. Hey, come on. That's Ralphie. We all know him. We all love him. He was just the cutest thing with his thick tortoise shell glasses. And I sort of thought like, I don't know, there was a similar vibe going on. For some reason, I had those two pictures next to each other. That's me. When I had my beaver teeth, sucked my thumb in secret till I was 13 analyze me. I don't know. <laughs> I told I told them I quit when I was nine. My dad bought me a bunch of Barbies to quit and I quit. But I kept going. <laughs> so I got buck teeth. Um, and then I told you about um, being blessed in the Rio Grande River. And this is pictures of that. My dad holding me while I was getting blessed in the holy Rio Grande. So pretty awesome stuff. Love my pa. Sometimes we butt heads, you know, I'm a bull, I can't help it. Sometimes these things happen when we come from people. Uh, 
Gizmo is exerting his pheromones right now. <laughs> He's telling the world he was here. Um, so this is for you, Pa. Happy birthday. Uh, this is actually a poem that I wrote for my dad for Christmas. I'm going to say, wow, time. Whoo. A river is a metaphor. It flows quickly. I guess I'm going to say this was about 13 years ago I wrote this, but I elaborated on it. And so it is not the same poem that you would have heard back then that I framed for him for Christmas. I changed it a little and added some to it because I'm flexing my poetry muscles a lot lately. So, it's for my paw. It's called L-Y-M-T-A-T-H. L-Y-M-T-A-T-H. Bet you're wondering what that is. My dad came up with it. He still has a flip phone, remember? But it's his, like, 21st century lingo. It means, love you more than a ton, hey. Love you more than a ton, hey, for my father, the otter. He tenderly picked each wild flower as though they would crumble in his grasp, as though he could never give enough praise to even one piece of this beautiful vastness. He walked without making a sound, weightlessly bounding into his very own Goodwin painting. He moved gingerly as crisp leaves spun into the heavenly light of the coming future. His soft palm found toughening in the mysteries of the tree bark, gnarled dark crevices filled brimming with a thick sap dating back to the very beginning, brimming wisdom, bringing wisdom and freedom both. He discovered his own way to growth. He defies the red lines of the mediocre masses. He builds human world defenses with the guidance of the forest folk. Stoke your encircled fire just beyond those fences enclosing stifled desires. Just past that are the unmarked paths of a million first film frames. Off the untamed road, so many curves to snake. My dad named me after a duck, and that duck wanted to be in his video. <laughs> Off the untamed road, so many curves to snake and chances to take. Feasts for the hungry soul, full to bursting with intricate dreams. Each moonbeam granted to be seen, each budding blossom in the feminine light is given praise and deep insight in his humble awe. The soft, soft snow, sweet rain, and glowing fall offerings dance downward as most mystical gifts for him. He skims the horizon, seeking a windmill to climb and hoot and holler atop. He plants a crop of his thoughts as he walks. Why he loves the woods, he couldn't list all the reasons. No radiant season's bounty passes without poetic tribute. Someday, he will share all this proof of magic with a daughter who blooms out of his own soil. Sometimes they will be as oil and water are, but other times she will see into him as a reflecting pool of clear mountain water. He will teach her to find the majesty waiting beyond the trail, the dazzling worlds woven within it, within it all, but for now, he sits in the sparkling tree theater, forest land dew, a boy lost in the clouds and proud to be, dancing happily in the lushness of his secret universe. He takes off his worn down boots and lets his toes melt into the flora bed quilt. The sun warms his brow with the sweet sweat of adventure. The jubilation of this moment is blessed aloud by the whippoorwills and starlings. A symphony swells in his rosy ears, and he stores it in the back pocket of his heart. The day changes, but soul particles of that boy rise up to the mighty trees and sink to the roots and riverbeds to live forever in nature's deeply etched charms and warmly outstretched arms. So that's my poem for today. That's for my pa. I thought it was interesting too. I had this poem uh, stashed away and I was looking for it. I haven't read it probably in, 
I don't know, three or four years. And I wrote that other poem for my dad's healing. And I'm telling you, I'm not just trying to sound like, oh, I know so much about birds because I know nothing compared to my dad, but he has taught me like hundreds and hundreds of birds names, but I chose the whippoorwills and the starlings as my birds for the video I did the other day. So I thought that was kind of cool. Everything's been very woohoo tied together like the brambles all around me. Um, I got love for y'all. I got love for my pa, that's for sure. He gave me life and that is a really cool gift and I'm so stoked that he handed it to me. Um, he's a good man and I hope he's healing well and send him a little bit of your juju, sparkle, fairy dust, prayers, whatever you want to call it. Um, happy birthday, Pops. Love you more than a ton, hey. See you tomorrow, everybody.